Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the brand new features in Particle Illusion 2021.5. Probably the biggest workflow enhancement in Particle Illusion 2021.5 is the inclusion of the brand new node view down here. If I click on this node, you can see up here we can see the layer controls, and if I add a preset, that adds both the emitter and the particles included with that emitter into the node view. Now you can see that the emitter is selected. So up here, all we see is those emitter controls. If I select the particle, then up here, all we see are the particle controls. And if I add a second preset, then that also gets included in the list. And this one has two particles. So in previous versions of Particle Illusion, this would have all been in one big long list. We would have had layer one at the top, then we would have had two emitters and three particles, which makes for a very long list and also it makes it very difficult to find what you want to adjust. But that's now a thing of the past because all I have to do is find the node that I want to change, click on that and come over here and adjust the settings. So it allows me to zero in on the parameters that I want to find really quickly. And I've only been using this for about a week and it's completely changed the way I personally use Particle Illusion. You will notice that with the particles we can see the color here, we have some gradients, and also the particle shape. And we can't change those directly from the node view. This is purely for navigational purposes in this release. Notice what happens in the controls when I click off of the node. Up here we can see the camera, and that's because the project is set to 3D. If we were in 2D mode, then we wouldn't see the camera models up here. There are a couple of simple controls. There's a little zoom slider down the bottom, so we can zoom in and out. And also, a reset button. If you have moved your nodes around and made things a little messy, all you have to do is come down and hit R and that will reset all of the nodes. So a simple navigational feature in this version of Particle Illusion, but even with just the navigational part of this, it's very welcome. Playback performance and also timeline navigation has been enhanced in Particle Illusion 2021.5. Once a frame has been loaded into the cache, then I can get really fast playback and I can click around the timeline and get instant feedback, which is a really nice new feature. There's also some handy new zoom options in graph view. I just click on size over life here. We've already got a couple of keyframes in here. Down the bottom here, we have a zoom slider, so we can zoom in and out. There's also an auto zoom button. You can see here it's activated by default. So if I change the size of this view, you can see how the graph auto zooms. Now if I turn that off and change the size, you can see how it slides down. So to zoom the graph height manually, we can use the new zoom graph height button. And there's also a full reset button to the right of that, which will frame your entire graph. So a couple of brand new and very welcome ways to work in graph view. Building on the 3D features introduced in Particle Illusion 2021, 2021.5 now includes some brand new 3D emitter shapes. Here I've got a simple setup using a circle shape. And if I just come down and click inside my node view, get access to my camera models and choose orbit, and then just change the spin, you can see I can orbit around the emitter. And that was introduced in 2021. Now if we come back down and select the node once more, come up to shape, you can see we have a new box and sphere. I'm just going to choose box first. And we can reshape this interactively directly on the stage just by dragging. Or you can do it numerically down here in the controls. If I just switch the render view to world view, not only can we change the width, height, and depth, but we also now have 3D Z position. We can move that forwards and backwards in our scene, which is really handy. We also have a sphere now. And the same thing, we can interact with that directly on the stage or change the radius here. Forces can now also be manipulated in 3D. You see that adds a box onto my stage. 
change this to top view. And I'll just move this slightly to the right. Hit play. You can see how that's affecting the particles. I'll just increase the strength slightly. And there we go. Bring the spin back to zero. And deflectors can also be used in 3D. If I just add one to the stage and just position it over here on the right, you can see how that starts deflecting those particles. And here's a quick example I created in After Effects of how you might use 3D emitters. This has got five sphere emitters and it's also got one box emitter. It's a rather large box emitter that's encompassing the entire scene. And that looks like dust. Notice I've also got depth of field turned on, so the particles are reacting to the depth of field. And I'm also animating the camera to orbit around the particles. And the After Effects text layer looks like it's moving in front and behind the particles because I've split those text layers. So look out for that technique in an upcoming tutorial. Users of Particle Illusion Inside Continuum in After Effects will now benefit from a host of different ways in which Particle Illusion can attach emitters to After Effects layers. Let's take a look. If we come up to the effects and from Transforms choose Emitter, that makes the Take Path From option active. And there's a few choices here. We can choose Comp Lights, 3D Layer and Mask and Text. Let's look at Comp Lights first. Now I have no lights in the scene, so I'm just gonna quickly create a light. It's a simple point light, click OK. And you can see how that emitter instantly attached itself to that light. And if I move that light around, the emitter is attached to it. There's a couple of options available. The default is all lights, but there's a range of different options. Things like non-visible lights, or even a number of different ways to name lights. That way you can use some lights to illuminate your scene, and other lights to just be particle attachment lights. If I duplicate this light and drag that, because we have it set to all lights, then it duplicates the emitter to the new light. I can just add a quick camera to that. And you can see it shifts slightly. But if I come up to the effect and choose Use Comp Camera, then we get perfect registration between the emitters and the lights. And here's a quick comped up example. Here I've got six different lights and I've moved them back in Z space. And I've also got a couple of expressions to make the lights flicker and a wiggle expression on the position of the light. So it's moving up and down, which is moving the particle emitter up and down as well. And out of interest, the 3D sphere in the middle is from Tidal Studio, also using the After Effects camera. So keep an eye out for a tutorial in which I'll walk through this one in more detail. Now to demonstrate the next option, I'm actually going to use a Cinema 4D file. I've got this simple scene here just set up in Cinema 4D. It's this layer down here, Chimneys. And with it selected, we can see the Cineware effect here in the Effect Control Panel. I'm just going to click on Cinema 4D Scene Data Extract. That just brings in some null objects and a camera from the Cinema 4D file. So now if I select the Particle Illusion layer, come up to Transforms and choose Emitter. And this time, rather than choosing Lights, I'm going to choose 3D Layer. I'm going to choose this one here on the front chimney. So that's cylinder. So for my 3D layer, I'm going to choose cylinder. And there you go. So now I have an emitter attached to a 3D layer in 3D space. And that's really useful, especially if you're using Cinema 4D and bringing in your Cinema 4D 3D scenes. Now you can add the particle illusion particles into that 3D scene. And here's a finished example. This one has smoke coming from all three chimneys. To do that, all I did was duplicate the particle illusion layer and choose a different 3D layer for the duplicates. And the third and probably most exciting option if you're a motion graphic designer is the ability to use masks or text. Then from the choose path option, there's a few options here. I can choose all masks both simultaneously and sequentially. I can choose a single mask and I can also choose text, which we'll look at in a moment. I'll choose all masks simultaneously. And for my mask text layer, 
I'm going to choose PI masks. And you can see there's also a path location option. I have some keyframes set for path location, just animating from zero to one revolution. And that moves the particles along all of the masks simultaneously in one full revolution. And you can already see with the lines feature that was introduced in Particle Illusion 2021, you get some really stunning results. If I choose all masks sequentially, you'll see it will run that particle emitter along one mask and then it will follow with the other mask, which is also a really great look. So nice to have this feature in Particle Illusion finally. You also have different directions, forward, backward, forward, backward, and backward, forward. Now for text, let me just turn the text on. For text, I'll choose once again mask and text. And instead of all masks, I'll choose text simultaneously. And for the text layer, choose the particle illusion text. And this adds emitters to each of the letters. You can see the P has two because it has this inner path as well. Same with the A, the R, and the O. And because particle illusion has so many letters, that gives us a lot of emitters, which also gives us a lot of particles per frame. Now this can slow things down. You can see this is starting to chug away a little bit. One thing you can do is just adjust the number and that will make things just a little bit faster and easier to preview. Now if you're using text sequentially on the other hand, this only uses one emitter, which starts at the P and finishes at the N. And here's a more finished example where I've just animated the levels of the logo and text to make it look as if the particles are revealing them out of the darkness. And you can see with the lines feature turned on in the particle settings, it's really giving this an extra polished look. And of course, no new version of Particle Illusion would be the same without some brand new presets. There's a variety of different looks to explore, including a number of them that have been specifically designed to work with masks and text. And these also take full advantage of the turbulence and lines features introduced in Particle Illusion 2021. Okay, so thanks for watching. To learn more about Continuum and Particle Illusion, or to download a demo, be sure to visit borisfx.com.